Hey everybody, welcome back to the dumbest modeling channel on YouTube. 100% guaranteed or your money back to be the dumbest modeling channel on YouTube. If you can find me a dumber channel, you send me a link to prove it, alright? And I'll be the judge then. So, basically, yeah, not a chance. Uh, okay, so now for the tedious, we're at part 7. You've made it. You've made it this far. I've made it this far. This is a very detailed model kit. Um, every time I go to pick it up, I, I'm so used to doing RC tanks and like expecting about a 15 to 20 pound load. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this thing weighs nothing. But anyone used to 35th scale tanks will be like, oh my God, it's a boat anchor. Um, or full interior kits for that matter. Sheesh. So stowage, stowage, stowage. Uh, let's, uh, we've got all sorts of stowage. Primarily, we bought the uh, specific value gear set for the Andes Hobby Headquarters tank. You could use this on anything. This is an amazing set of value gear parts for about, I think, 25 bucks um, from Andes Hobby Headquarters and possibly other places. I'm not sure. I'm sure in Europe they got a few distributors too. Uh, but you get a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, I also have previous 16 scale value gear stuff. So the darker gray stuff is from a previous set. I've used a few parts on my uh, Centurion build. Go check that build out. That's an awesome tank, too. Um, but, yeah, these are beautifully, beautifully detailed parts. These are lovely. I mean, he really stepped it up. This is next level for value gear. I'm very impressed. There's no cleanup to do, really, at all on these. Uh, the only thing we have to work on is this little wooden plank for between the front fenders. We just got to clearance it for some of the stuff on the uh, the front uh, transmission housing. Um, on top of that, we've got, our, we've got our little tools. You know, I painted some... Uh, some of this horrible stuff. Vallejo Model Air would flame me in the comments. I can never get this stuff to not clog my airbrush. And I have all of their proper airbrush thinner and flow improver. And every time I could put it in a 0.5 needle airbrush and after long enough, it's completely clogged. But it's okay. We know how to clean airbrushes here. Uh, <laughs> mostly because of Vallejo. Uh, what else do we have? We have, you know, the jerry cans it came with. Um, we also have... These classy hobby jerry cans. I don't know if I'm going to need any. Uh, I have a spare, I think, uh, Tamiya jerry can. I'll probably throw that in the mix if I need it. Um, some people have been covering the cooling vents over the engine deck. Now, I'm not a rivet counter at all. And I do a lot of what-if tanks. Uh, but that being said, don't cover your radiator vent. I mean, you're covering the cooling vents for the... I'm tr going to try not to cover it. I might I might overlap a little bit, like, you know, slightly encroach upon it, but it, it just, it looks technically, and not rivet countery, and not historically accurate, you know. I mean, if you're in the dead of winter, you know, in the, you know, the eastern front, uh, fine, you know, if it's, it's, you might not need that much cooling. But, yeah, I think that's just, it just makes the model look like, uh, weird if someone knows what they're looking at at all um so yeah for once ian is kind of like eh, don't cover your don't do that that's not it's not that you can't do it it's your model you can absolutely do it i just think it's a little weird um also i want to kind of be able to get those open if i need to oh i mean i could just take the turret off to get to the battery pack really um so that being said we've got the wooden board to do the vallejo model uh air wood i love the color though I, this is an amazing color uh, it's a great base so like you paint your your sledgehammer handle, this base wood color, and it looks kind of just like, like a like a like a luxury car saddle leather at this point, basically. But you just wait till we're done. I'm gonna use this for a lot of stuff, and uh, you know we're gonna break out our khaki. We're gonna need some more. I'm not gonna use olive drab on any tarps or anything. I don't want them to completely blend in, so I'm gonna find a different color of dark green from Tamiya. I have quite a few from all the different tank builds over the years. Um, we have dark green two. I believe I used that on my Russian IS two JS two. We have dark green two RAF. I bought it because I, because it was there. I never needed it. I it's brand new, still not opened. But so a lot of stowage to paint. Oh, and MREs. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure if they're out of business or they're back in business. But this is from Verlinden Productions. These are like a nice thick cardstock, but they're just cut out. Um, you know, kind of fold and glue together um, MRE boxes. They're pretty slick. And uh, we'll probably make at least one or two of these to throw in the tank. 
because uh, hell, it's an MRE. I mean, I don't see any MREs, you know, in the in the Valley Gear set, but uh, that would, I don't know. Yeah, that wouldn't work for them. I mean, they they need to include decals, and it's just like a square box at that point. It doesn't look like cardboard. I I don't think they'd want to even mess with that because there's no way to really get it to look proper. But we've got all sorts of stuff we could put all over the tank. Um, I've got to also keep in mind I need to, you know, keep space for the regular stowage that's supposed to go in this thing. Did I miscalculate when figuring out I could squeeze this thing in after the fact? I'm not sure. Or do I have to just slice off a nub somewhere? Eh, hey, whatever. We'll make it fit. Make it fit. Either way, um, I'm just going to be going through the drudging work of painting up stowage. Um, I think I'm going to start laying it out though in its raw form just to see where I want things to go. And then we will, we'll, we'll take it from there of where we're going to put stuff. Uh, we have to grind on this thing a bit. If you did get this set and you are going to grind on that front board, it is resin. So please, please wear a respirator of some form, at least like an N95 mask. Everybody's got them now. <laughs> it's not like you don't have a mask at home. <laughs> I don't think anyone has an excuse anymore. Um, so yeah, throw on your mask for this. Um, it's it's not recommended. It's I mean you don't want to breathe in resin dust. Um, so that being said, we're gonna get to work, and I'll be right back. See, we we always have that 100% guarantee that that we're idiots over here. Well, I'm an idiot. Um, I picked out the wrong MREs. These are modern MREs. <clears throat> So we're not going to be using those today. What we have is Verlinden Sea Rations World War II. Uh, we have a Ration 10 Menu 2 and a Menu 4. We're going to use just a couple of these. But yeah, these these are uh, getting pretty rare. I should uh, not admit to wanting to pirate this by just photocopying it and getting it printed on some heavy cardstock and have an unlimited supply since it's basically 8.5 by 11. Um, but... That being said, we, we are we are going to use the correct World War II C rations on the tank. Just I know someone was just already at the keyboard. We'll be right back. Okay, it's just about time to go upstairs and make some tacos. Yes. Uh, so we got look at this cool little thing. This is the little uh, Verlinden ration box. Uh, if you're searching for one sixteenth scale accessories, also uh, use the term one twenty mm, one one hundred twenty millimeter. Uh, because that's how Verlinden refers to their stuff. There's still plenty of their stuff floating around on eBay. But these little ration boxes are sick. I used a little bit of a one thirty second inch chart pack black uh, vinyl tape to make the straps on the box. It actually recommends that in the instructions, oddly enough. They know what they're doing, but I guess they don't want to include the tape. Uh, so yeah, a little, little, little menu four ration there. Throw her on the back. She'll stay warm on, near the engine grill uh, in the winter. Uh, do, don't expose to extreme temperatures, it says on that ration box. Hmm, well, this is incoming air, so, you know, it'll be fine. Um, we assembled the box with this stuff, the Scotch double-sided tape. Works great. Uh, you could use glue if you want. I found that CA glue kind of soaks through and bleeds through the cardboard a little, or the, whatever they're using for this. So, you know, either Elmer's glue and have some patience, or some other gentle paper glue, or this double-sided tape, which works perfect. And our chart pack tape, that's actually, uh, I purchased that for a different project. That's actually to uh, mask the chiller grills on our 1350 scale uh, Enterprise. And that chart pack tape was a tip from uh, Phil over at Spruverse while he was bloviating, as he says. And uh, great tip, bought the tape, have it handy. Um, we figured out our basic stowage arrangement on the tank. Um, we got our front board in place. I'm going to put a spare track link or two up here. We've got a, a wooden ammo crate, I'm assuming, wooden crate of some form. And we got a little tarp uh, rolled up, small enough to fit easily under the, uh, the 30. I've lost my 50 cal ammo can because I wanted to kind of put it on top of the turret near the 50. Uh, I'll find it, or I'll just pull out something from the stash. I got plenty of spare parts. And then in the back here, we've got this pretty well loaded up. Uh, we'll figure it out. I'm not necessarily the type of guy who's going to go through the trouble of making miniature straps for everything. Some of the modelers, more skilled than me, can and will and have done that, and it looks amazing. 
I'm probably just going to go with my standard blue tack. Because you know they had that in World War II. They were just slapping globs of silly putty on everything just to stick it on the tank. Not, no, Ian, that's not true, Ian. No, Ian, stop. Um, there we go. So we figured out our stowage arrangement because I don't want to blockade too much of the tools uh, from being seen. Obviously, we're going to cover up the sledgehammer quite a bit in the back here with these with these little rucksacks. Uh, I, I may omit one or two of them. I may change my mind and throw this thing in there. I don't know. We'll see. But this is basically what we're going to what we're going to do. Um, there's a lot of stowage in this value gear pack. Like every time I buy a value gear pack for stowage, I always end up with a lot of awesome leftover bits of stowage. Um, these are all sort of mostly World War II themed, although tarpaulins, tarpaulins for the UK crowd, right? Uh, the tarps you could use for just about any model. Um, they're great anywhere for anything. Everybody used tarps. Everybody still has all these stupid tarps. So there we go. Um, if anyone hasn't seen, there's a Value Gear video where uh, the owner of Value Gear, I forget his name, he makes these things live in his own two hands with some green stuff on uh, Andy's Hobby Headquarters channel. And it's pretty sick, I gotta say. Um, we still have all of our little uh, sight glasses and headlamps and tail lamps masked off because we're gonna peel those off at the end of of uh, weathering and the final flat clear coat, um, and then we'll pull off all of our masking. Just in case anyone's wondering, not that you probably care, but I thought about it. We'll be back. Um, I'm making tacos. So we'll see you in a little bit, okay? I'll be right back. Well, back to the idiot's workbench. Uh, we spent a few hours on the uh, Hobby Time Modelers live stream today. <clears throat> uh, Sunday. Look at the Sunday live stream. Uh, it'll be there's a link in the description below of me painting this figure. I'm not a, a good figure painter. I don't. I don't claim to be. Um, but, you know, we got them done. So, uh, you know, a bunch of the products used to paint this fella. Um, for the pants, we did Field Gray XF65 for that, that green. Uh, we used the same color for his helmet. And then, uh, <clears throat> Flat Flesh for his face and wrists. And uh, here's the little, little dark iron for the 45 cal that you really can't even see anymore. Uh, his jacket we painted in XF57 buff. His gloves, I used uh, XF88 dark yellow 2, just because it was a little darker than the buff. Uh, any leather bits, we used XF64 red brown, so boots. Holster, holster straps, helmet strap, behind the goggles there. Uh, khaki. Uh, khaki we used on this head strap around here. A little khaki. What are you wearing, Jake, from State Farm? Khakis. Um, and then we washed his face with this new stuff from Tamiya. <clears throat> Orange-brown accent color. And, uh, and then we went over... The entire figure basically with dark brown panel liner and we just slathered it on there really generously we just put it everywhere and then we wiped it all off with paper towels and rubbed it off even more with q-tips to get to get a halfway you know to get get a decent finish again th this is not the best example of this figure that has been painted by modelers um, <laughs> the little the little unit decal and the uh, Sergeant First Class, I think, decal. Those were tricky, but we used our uh, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Mark Setter, and Mr. Mark Softer. Multiple rounds of Mark Softer right there to get it all laid in to all the wrinkles on the arm. But that Mark Setter, that stuff is magic. Mr. Mark Softer just is... It's... it. To me, uh, Mark Fit Strong is, is really good stuff. And like the micro scale stuff, the micro sole and the micro set and all that, they're great too. But man, this Mr. Hobby stuff just works a treat. There we go. We got our, our little tanker there. 
little goggles. They did a little, uh, I think, a little uh, gunmetal around the edge of the goggles. Then I flat cleared the whole thing, so the goggles were a little hazed up there, but, you know, after a little bit of time in theater, they would be. Um, I do want to add a little wire, I think, to the bottom of the mic handle, obviously, uh, so that I can just, like, drape it in to the tank. Yeah, there's our, there's our little guy. Hello, Mr. Tank Commander. Yeah, cool, though. Pretty nice. Is my camera doing weird things with light balance? I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, there we are. So that's that update. Uh, if you want to watch me paint this thing somewhat live, uh, go to the Hobby Time Modelers YouTube channel and uh, click on the Sunday live stream for January ugh, January 8th. It started at 1 p.m. I came in a little bit <clears throat> after 1 p.m. And this is now 6 p.m. And we just wrapped up that live stream. So, yeah long video but hey check them out it's you know i hang out there and i just bs with the with the guys and the gals and we make jokes and we uh work on our models uh because it would make my videos entirely too long uh to you know really go over all of it but uh that's that but you can watch the process so yeah he came out mediocre uh you know i've seen way better but uh it could be worse I'm pretty happy with it. As far as my standards go, this is the best figure I've ever painted so far. It's the second figure I've also ever painted. I have a few more I should be painting. I have one for the Abrams, uh, the Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear Tank Commander from Verlinden, and I have the uh, Tamiya JGSDF uh, tank crew uh, to put in my Type 10 someday. And uh, I'm getting a little more confident I might be able to actually tackle those. Um, so, oh, be right back with more updates. Uh, basically, stowage painting this is up next. BRB. Hello, everyone. We're back uh, for a short little session here. This is going to be the end of this part of the build video. Um, go watch, go to the live tab, and uh, we did a lot of stowage painting. Very boring, a lot of bullshitting. But uh, some stowage painting with the Hobby Time Modelers on the Hobby Time Modelers channel. And uh, we had a great stream. We all had fun. We're hanging out. We had Gilly. We had Donnie. We had Buck. You know, we, we had a blast. Uh, all our great viewers. Um, and maybe some people watch on my channel as well. That'd be said. But we're doing our stowage, and we've got some more, some more colors done here. So we did the uh, Vallejo... Uh, model air air it's an, a kind of an overstatement it, model goop we did that to do the wood color ah no i don't know if it's dry yet and then we got a newer color for the tarps we got uh xf 51 khaki drab to do the tarps which is differentiated from olive drab because it's more green this is more brownish blackish i don't know well i did it over a black primer so there's that and then we did some uh, red-brown for these thicker straps. And we did some desert yellow for these little ropey bits on there. And we got these. So same color combo there. We got the Vallejo Goop Air Clog Your Airbrush paint. And then we got some olive drab for the ammo cans. And some khaki drab for the tarpaulins or tarps or whatever you want to call them. And a little red-brown for the leather straps. And we got to do a lot more weathering and detail painting. We're going to make this wood look more like wood. Okay, not like a, a hang-long tank. This is going to look like real wood when we're done. Well, close-ish to real wood when we're done. This little guy. Okay. Um, these, little, these little packs. Little backpacks. Straight khaki. Um, which is uh, XF49 khaki, and then uh, XF64 red-brown for the little leathery straps. And uh, these little these little doohickeys, the handles are the, the Vallejo model clog wood color, and then uh, Tamiya <clears throat> X10 gun model. This is the oldest jar of paint I think I have that I'm still using. Because I don't use very much of it. So we did the axe head, gunmetal, and, you know, the shovel, and the sledgehammer, and 
all these other things and you know the little pickaxe thing it had uh gunmetal <sighs> and we've got to let this stuff dry now um so we're gonna come back we've got a whole bunch of <laughs> set dressing now we've we've got our little uh our little burnt mini puff stay puff babies they're so adorable uh, that came with our uh, Haslab Proton Pack. They're really cute. They, they're they really nice little mini figures. They're nice figures. They look really good. Good texture, good paint decos, nice details, good, good, good joint. You know, good everything. They're just, they're nice. Um, you know, we got our little, little Ecto Labs belt gizmo going on there. And also we got another Ghostbusters, whatever. Just going overboard. The YouTubers, they do the set dressing, and it's like, you know, eh, yeah, I fell into that trap of, you know, having little business cards and postcards and stuff of places we like to buy stuff from. Now, I am not sponsored by anybody here. Anything here is places I've bought from that have given me fantastic customer service, such as Andy's Hobby Headquarters, Ecto Labs. If you're a Ghostbusters fan and you like, you know, props and stuff, ectolabs.net is the place. Obviously, if you want to buy this model tank, Andy's Hobby Headquarters. They send you a beautiful little, uh, well, it's printed, but it's a handwritten and then reprinted note. Thanking you for your order. Oh, our, oh, our Jewish space laser from uh, Concord Aerospace. Arc Reactor. On. Fire the laser. Yes, Frau Farbissina. Uh, I don't know if she was Jewish. And our 9-volt our battery has died and our lights have stopped moving, so I'm not going to torture that thing any longer. I need a new 9-volt battery. That being said, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and we are going to... So these are all painted now. Now they need their weathering. Uh, as far as the wood finish... I, I categorize it somewhere in between painting and weathering because we've painted a base color on the wood and now we're going to weather it to make it look more like wood. I'm going to use a lot of techniques that I've learned from... I'm not going to say the name again. This place. His channel is a wealth of knowledge for the nov novice to moderate to mediocre modeler. Um... Advanced modelers, obviously, uh, <laughs> were snide to him and called him a mediocre modeler. And uh, they are the nexus of the origin of the Mediocre Modelers Club, which is an offshoot of Andy's Hobby Headquarters on Facebook. But that's what we are here, um, is mediocre. I don't consider myself uh, at the top of the the skill ladder as far as model builders goes i think my stuff comes out good enough and uh you know you be the judge i mean you know it's it it's pretty decent and there's no weathering done on this yet just you know the pre-shading with the black and white base coat but uh yeah we're mediocre here and we are proud of it so there's no problem there Either way, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for listening to my constant diatribes. Uh, what does Brewverse, what does Phil say there? Uh, uh, bloviating. That's it, bloviating. I like that word, but I'm not going to steal it from him. That's all him. You know, he owns bloviating on YouTube. I own nothing except being the dumbest hobby channel on all of YouTube. So again... From me to you, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I forget to ask at the beginning of my videos most times. See you next time, everybody. Adios.